give you praise. We thank you so much, God. I'm going to say something this morning that just dropped in my spirit as we was worshiping a little bit. I just heard by the Spirit of God to share a couple things real quick, and we're going to go right into the sermon because I believe it fits. First of all, how many believe I hear from the Lord? That I, I, I hear what God says and I release what God says. Amen. You got to understand something. Over the last many years, I'm not saying I'm right about everything, but if, I'm, if I say it's from God, I'm usually pretty right. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. It's, it. And the thing I say that is, is this. I was involved with a major prophetic ministry. And our region, our church was over a certain region of, of, of churches. And an apostle came and said that he felt that our church was supposed to turn over and, and, and go ahead and make him the apostle over our church. And, and so we had a meeting and the financial advisors and everybody within the ministry, the elders, the deacons, and, and they invited me. They wanted to hear what God had to say. Yeah. Out of 12 people, 11 said they were for the, uh, this apostle taking over, yeah. and I was the only one that said, yeah. I don't believe this is right. I don't believe this is going to work. I, I, don't, yeah. I, I believe something's not right here. We need to stay where we're at. We're, we're under Christian International. We need to stay with under Christian International and Bill Hammond. And I said, I really believe that that's the way it's supposed to be right now. And uh, they went against what I said. And within a month, the church was over. One month, 200 people went down to 10. And we couldn't afford our $7,000 a month is what we had to put out. And it closed. The reason I'm saying this is because then in the revival in Litchfield, I had a dream, and I reminded you guys of this dream, and I even played it, that talked about I was up on a scaffold way up high, and I was, I was telling all the, the, the people, uh, trying to get them in order and trying to get them to listen to me, and, and, and they w wouldn't. The next thing I saw was myself down in a pool of blood because I got sick of it and I just jumped off. Now I understand out of those people always said, you hear from God, you always hear from God. But then when it came to that, that week, that last couple of weeks, all of a sudden now the same Bill Vincent wasn't hearing from God. And the reason I'm saying this is because it be ended up detouring an entire move of God that was meant to be great. Come on, we had we had Sid Roth wanted to have us on the television program. Hallelujah. We had other television networks that wanted to film it. We had uh, uh, Jeff Jansen and David Herzog and, and Todd Bentley and all these great men of God were already saying they wanted to come and be a part of what God was doing right there in Litchfield. And we was at a height, a pinnacle, a place and if people were to listen, it would have probably ended up being the biggest move of God this world's ever seen. I don't care how little it was. It was that what was getting ready to pop. Because once the word would get out in that kind of arena, it would have exploded. And I'm telling you, I'm saying this because God said it's an importance this morning. That from this day forward more than ever, we need to be very, very careful and everything that we're doing, especially in coming forth as men and women of God. Because I don't want to have a failed move. Come on. And even in the students, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. The students and the graduation and the ordination and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, all the things that we're going to do over the next couple of months is going to be awesome. But understand, it's not going to come without deliverance. Amen. Come on. Somehow, some way, I'm going to schedule everybody that, that, that God leads to have deliverance. Some, uh, some people could use about five sessions of actually getting delivered. Come on. And it's not because I just see a bunch of demons. Hallelujah. 
But I have seen some over the last year. I have. But at the same time, it's because to get ready for where we're going, we have to get ready. And it's a humility. And so I'm putting this out there. I'm going to put it out there tonight. So if we're not willing to be delivered, it's not going to work. And you say, oh, I don't have a problem. I don't know why, but I just see things so easy when it comes to demonic. And there's times that demons will more or less wave at me a certain way from people. And, and I'm telling you, when it happens, I know it, I see it, I, it's clear. It's because there's a, it's almost like the Paul I know, Jesus I know, and Bill, yeah, we know him too. It's become that way. In the past 20 years, I've probably cast out at least a few thousand demons. And I'm talking about out of probably a few hundred people. And I'm talking about the throwing up, the squirming, the throwing people up in the air. I mean, I've seen all that you can imagine. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying that people, I'm not telling you you have demons, but I am saying deliverance, you never know what's going to happen when you start breaking off things. Amen. When you get to a root of an issue in your life, boom, something could explode in you. And you just never know, praise God. But we need to schedule it. We need to start scheduling to get people done, get people ready. So I'm going to be asking, you're going to have a test tonight, and it's going to be, are you willing to be delivered? Amen. Come on. Are you willing to be delivered? Yes. And let me tell you something. If you say maybe or no, it's going to make a decision right then and there. Yes. Then you're not ready. Yes. Because we need to be yes. And I'm not going to go after, I'm going to go after by the most needful. Because some people have asked for it and want it. And there's others that just need it and haven't asked for it. Come on. And let me tell you something. I am the rarity of a minister. Because I know things about you or I may find out things about you and nobody will ever hear it from me. I am taking things to the grave. I've had people report things to me that would bl blind you. It's so bad. And I'm telling you, I'm the very odd minister because I'm not going to be a mouth to try to spread things. Hallelujah. I would rather see you get set free. Come on. More or less, I've become a man of God that I want. I wanted to be over me. I want, I, I want to be just as the man of God that I would have over me. Come on. Hallelujah. And, and what I'm talking about is dedication. Because that's what we need to be is dedicated to a purpose. You have visions. You have purpose. The body of Christ, the students, they have a purpose and a vision. But you don't try to change my vision. What you do is you support my vision. And as you support my vision, your vision will come to pass. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Sam and Paula, they have a vision, and I believe God's going to fulfill that vision, and, it, and, and God's going to take them in that direction as they're supporting the vision that God's given me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I don't say things and do things and all this stuff just to have fun. Come on. Hallelujah. Like I said many times, my wife and I can jam at home. We could just worship. Praise God. And, and we wouldn't even have to leave the house. Yeah. The children could stay in their jammies, and sometimes they do anyway. But, and we could just have a good time, not pay rent, not have to worry about all the people, yeah. and have the glory. Amen. And it will change some people's life through writings and distribution and all the things that we're doing. But I don't know about you, but I want to move of God. And I want a move of God that's going to be a, effective. And it's going to take a lot more than Bill. A lot more than Bill, than Bill and Tabitha. That's another thing. The Litchfield Revival would have went probably another five, ten years and probably blown this world upside down if I could have actually trained people to actually do it. We'd get people set free, get people delivered, get them on fire, even get them a little training, but we would never release them. And it was because of the, the leadership wouldn't allow it. 
because I was the one drawing the crowd. I was the one bringing the offerings in. I was the one. Let me tell you something. He was the one. Come on. We can get so mistaken. I don't care if the crowds fluctuate. If God wants to activate somebody, he's going to activate them. Come on. Hallelujah. So this morning we're going to talk about, starting out, we're going to talk about applying the blood. <coughs> One of the albums that God told me to work on getting online is the blood of Jesus. And I really believe <coughs> that the blood of Jesus is the most important thing in any ministry right now. But what I want to talk about is dedicated to the Lord by applying the blood. And, and, and I, I was took back when I was putting this together of the story where Moses was directed to apply the blood on the doorposts. Within the household of Israel, I want you to understand to perform this act of obedience, the judgment of the spirit of death would not touch them. Come on. And remember what I talked about last night. We're going in. We're continuing from where that left off. The army of God that God is putting together right now is going to be anointed men and women of God who are going to know who their God is. Come on. And do great exploits. <coughs> They're not going to be shaken by every wind of doctrine. They're not going to be pulled this way and that. Praise God. The biggest problem I, I've seemed to have, and I'm kind of preaching to the students without the students all being here, is I've had a problem over and over and over again. You, We're trying to raise up and go somewhere, and a lot of people try to keep an iron in the fire somewhere else. And what I mean by that, it, let me tell you something. You can't fully support a vision unless you're 100%. Come on. And I, I have, and that's one problem I've had with past ministers that I've had to let go is, is they tell me with their mouth 100%, 100%, 100%, but instead they're doing worship for another church, and it just continues to be more about that church instead of this ministry and what God's wanting to do here. But understand, it's not that I'm trying to possess people, but you've got to understand we're going after a purpose, and either you're with me or you're not. Come on. And I can't, I got to guarantee somebody's going to be to my right when I need them. Hallelujah. Because think about this. When the army is going forth like the old-fashioned Civil War, when they would march with their guns pulled, the spears on the end of the gun, and they would march. Come on. I've, I've been in a, a reenactment. That's how I know. Hallelujah. But they would go, praise God, and they would go. Let me tell you something. You got to be able to know that the person to your right is to your right. And the person to your left is to your left. Because otherwise, it's a blind side. The person behind you is behind you. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you are. You've got to be able to know where people are and be able to guarantee it. Come on. Hallelujah. Where's the guy over here? Oh, he, well, he had to go, you know, do something. Come on. And the reason I'm saying that, and I'm not saying that specifically for everyone here, I'm not pointing fingers, and if God is, he's doing it, not me. Yeah. But God is raising up an army. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. And how many know sometimes even our friends will be leading us astray? Amen. Why do you go to Hillsboro? Yeah. Why do you go to Hillsboro? Yeah. I mean, you, can't you find a church local? Come on. Think about that. And I'm telling you, how many know a lot of times our friends, well-meaning Christians, and this is in the book I, I'm writing right now, can prophesy things that will just lead you astray. Amen. They'll literally more or less try to give you a word yeah. and tell you you're not doing right. And they're well-meaning. But understand, here's the thing I always question about friends prophesying to friends. Do they know the situation? If they know the situation they prophesy to you, you can't guarantee it's from God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's counseling. That's not prophetic. Yeah. How many know? Come on. And I'm saying, I'm saying all this stuff today because there's somewhere we are about to go and the enemy will constantly put things in front of us to try to trip us up. 
There's a spirit of death that wants to take out an army. Come on. And a spirit of death that's wanting to take out an army, you know why? Because the army's going somewhere. One of the safest uh, positions in the military is, is the ones that stay on the base. They stay where they are. They don't go anywhere. They don't do anything. Amen. Come on. Yes. And, and they're important yes. to be in the church, not going anywhere, because guess what? we got to have meals Amen. and those things in the army I'm talking about. Yes. And it's awesome that they, they stay back, but you got to understand there's a lot of people that aren't, aren't actually in the battlefield. Right. Come on. And there's a lot of people God will never call into the battlefield. But when he calls you into the battlefield, immediately there's a spirit that tries to come upon you in your life, and it's a spirit of death. Not literally always just to kill you physically, but to kill your man, uh, kick your, your spirit, your, your, your finances, your, your vision, your connections, everyone that you're around relationships, whatever it is, the enemy is to rob, steal, kill, destroy. Isn't that what the enemy is always wanting to do? Amen. The enemy doesn't try to do that with people who's going nowhere. The enemy's not going to mess with people going nowhere. Why? Because they're no threat. The Lord's protection and covering initiated through a biblical model, that's what's taking place, is we're going to anoint the doorposts, <coughs> so to speak. Let me tell you something. When we move into a new building, I'm going to saturate that place. Amen. That place is going to have so much oil, it's going to, have, it's going to get stained for the things of God. <coughs> I saw myself by the Spirit today laying hands on each side of an individual's heads Amen. as a symbolic gesture of the application while pronouncing blessing of dedication, a protection from viruses, plagues, sickness, fatal accidents, death presently released in the atmosphere. Come on. You say, why are you doing this? There's reasons for everything we do. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you don't know what's coming, but God does. You know, the Bay, Bay of the Holy Spirit revival grew and became powerful and the miracles, signs, and wonders quickly. And went for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden, Nathan gets married. His name, you know, his status is changed. So when he goes back to his country, they, won't, they wouldn't let him back in for months and months and months. Some of you might even remember, I, I prophesied that he was going to be returned sooner than they projected because they were estimating a year or two. And he returned just as God said. Hallelujah. And the thing is, you've got to understand that during that time, the enemy was trying to really kill a revival. Come on. It's not a man, but how many know it's different when just any man is flowing? That's why I want to raise up a certain army to where if the enemy tries to attack one of us, the other one can try to take the reins and keep going. We're a team. We're a group. That's what God's raising up in this hour, and I believe there's a lot more out there that doesn't know they're supposed to be in here. Come on. And there's a lot of things God's even pulling on people's hearts right now to try to get them to be part of what God's doing. Amen. But it's a ground floor, and sometimes we can't see the full vision. And some people might even think, man, he's always concerned about every little thing. He's always concerned about every little molehill, every little mountain, every little anthill. He's thinking about everything. He's always trying to smash it before it even gets started. Exactly. Because I'm not here for just a little mountain. I'm here for the big mountain, and it's a glory mountain. And we're going somewhere, and I want to get to where we're going. And it's those little foxes that's going to spoil the whole thing. It's those little things that are going to get us in the way. Those little things are going to trip us and cause us to fall because it's those little things that we don't recognize are, are the problems. And it's only those little things that can become big, big things. 
Come on. How many know a lot of times that if we have a, a real problem in your life, it didn't start out big? Come on. It had to start out small. How many times did you ignore it? How many times, and I love Christians that always say, I think I'm strong enough to take care of it myself. Amen. Next thing you know, man, I'm all bound. What happened? We need to humble ourselves. I'm preaching a lot that I ain't got, so it's good. Hallelujah. One of the most difficult things for this ministry is to rest in the trust of dedication. We need to dedicate our family to the Lord. Our family has a purpose. In all this. <clears throat> Whether they're here or not, they're, they have a purpose in all this. Amen. This is true for those who travel and spend extended periods of time away from children and family. It's a sacrifice. The family don't understand, do they? They're like, we have this going on. We have this going on. You know, family, actually, when you are going somewhere and you're about to, you're being a vital, a vital part of a major thing that God's doing, sometimes even family will create events to try to see if you'll go to that. Amen. I've never been invited to so many cookouts and, and, and potlucks or whatever. Uh, sometimes it seems like Tabitha's mom's always having some idea. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a bowl of chili. Anybody want to come? I mean, type of thing. I mean, it, it, that's kind of the way it is. And it seems like it's because we're going somewhere, and, and, and they'll throw it out on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come on. Hallelujah. And they probably don't understand. Why are they not coming? you got to understand something. It's, and, and I'm not saying... We understand if, if, if you spend time with family and different things. But I'm telling you, sometimes it's just a distraction. Yeah. Come on. It is. Sometimes a distraction. And see, we're going after a big purpose. And I understand family. Hallelujah. I understand it because anytime somebody like Paula would say something, she wants to go see her mom and, and, and different things. I understand that, praise God. And especially that I know that you're a major part and it almost hurts your heart just to be able to go. You're like, I want to be with my family and love them because I love them. But, man, I just want to be here. Sometimes we wish we could be at two places at once. Come on. But at the same time, our families, they don't even know it, but they'll create things for us. My mom's having a birthday party today. And uh, I'm going to probably do my drive through Hallelujah. Praise God. Go in one door and out the other. Hallelujah. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Good cake. See ya. No, uh, but anyway, she, and her birthday is not for about three weeks, so I don't understand. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, she, you know, she's older and hallelujah. And, I, I, you know, I want to make uh, I want to make an effort. Hallelujah. And the thing is, is all that God's doing right now, the enemy, how many know, will just try to distract. Amen. Yeah. And here's why. How many have ever gone on vacation from work? Hopefully, you, some, you've all, if you work, you get a vacation. How hard it is it to get back in the flow when you get back to work? It's like, man, I mean, I was only gone a week. Yeah. It's like, man, how do we do this again? Hallelujah. I remember one time I took off four weeks because it was mandatory, use it or lose it. And they came to me and they said, hey, uh, you got vacation, use it or lose it. And they offered to pay half if I stayed. And I was like, I get it all if I leave. So I'm out of here, hallelujah. And it was the last four weeks of the year. So I ended up leaving during that entire time with the holidays and everything. I got a, a long time off, hallelujah. And, uh, whew, when I came back, I was lost. I was like, how do you do this? I mean, I knew where the power button was, and that was about it. Everything else was gone. When you step outside of a move of God, a lot of times you come back in, it's totally different. Amen. Over and over again in Litchfield, we had people that they would leave for three months, come back, and they're like, wow, how long has this been going on like this? 
you know, you'd think that, you know, they went to, you know, the, the moon or something and came back. A lot can happen within a short time, and that's where we're about to go. I guarantee you, when we hit the ground in the new place, God's going to provide. It's going to be like a takeoff running of what God's going to do. We're never going to stop. We're going to go to a high place in God, and we're never coming back. I, I promise you. Hallelujah. In the same way that Joseph dedicated his two sons to Jacob, we are to devote our children and family to the Lord. Come on. We need to devote our family, we need to devote our children, and we need to devote protection upon our children. The safest place for our children is for us to be in the will of God. See, that's the thing some people don't understand sometimes. When they make a decision and they have children not to be in the perfect will of God, they are affecting not their life, just their life, but their children's life. My wife and I talk about this all the time. They don't realize that. Because if, you're, if you have a certain vision and a will of God that you're supposed to be in, as soon as you step out, you buy a, a forfeit of your children. They're going to have to let go of that vision too because you are head of your house and you're stepping them out of the will of God. Come on. Think about that. Hallelujah. So some of the ministers and things I've, I've, I've had associated around me, every time they go wrong, guess what? They're leading their family wrong too. Because it, it affects the whole family. Everything we do affects our, us all. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. In the midst of all that we're doing, there's a divine, supernatural covering that God's going to cause to have, have in our life. He's going to cover us. He's going to give us a covering. Come on. A divine promise. I believe there's going to be a covering, a protection in this coming season. It's going to be separation of Israel in the land of Goshen. Come on. While the justice of God fell upon Egypt. Supernatural blessings are going to come of protection upon us. The application of the blood, vindication of judgment, of death. Come on. When, when Moses fulfilled the responsibility, it was an expression of dedication. When you take the, 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 the stepping out and doing what God tells you to do, how many have ever thought, why am I doing this? Yeah. Why am I anointing this? Why, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? Can't God just supernaturally do it for me just because he is good? Amen. Why do I got to anoint this? Why do I got to touch this? Why do I got to pray over this? Yeah. Why do I got to stand so firm in the faith? Because you're making a dedication in your life. It's when you make that dedication, you're dedicating yourself. When you take that step, praise God, and you move into a new place and you're anointing the windows, you're dedicating it. And you're becoming dedicated. I'm not just moving in for a couple of weeks. I'm here for the long haul, and I'm dedicating it to the Lord. Get a new vehicle and you anoint it. You're dedicating it to the Lord. Come on. It's, it's bigger purpose. You're not just doing it to have a vehicle. You know, we need, to, we need to follow the divine, divine counsel of the Lord. The spirit of might was released to protection. This marked recognition, separation of people, the doorposts being anointed with the blood. I'm telling you, it, it's only sometimes, how many know, sometimes the Lord is the one that sees it. The only one that sees it when we anoint. And also, sometimes the demonic sees it. Because when they come and God caused you, moved on your spirit, man, to anoint 
pray protection, whatever it is. When the enemy comes, they're like, whoa, there's no access here. We can't even get in. Come on. You don't know how important it is sometimes to anoint things. When I lay hands on both sides of your head today, it's going to be a supernatural release of that blessing and protection from all those plagues and, and accidents and all kinds of things that the enemy has planned. Come on. It's going to be a place of dedication. But just like anything, that doesn't mean you walk out of here and you light up a joint on the way out. You say, why'd you say that to this group? <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's an evident sin. But a lot of us don't realize the, the, the ones that we're just doing all the time. You know, you do enough disobedience that becomes sin. Amen. God says, do this, and you're like, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Guess what? It's rebellion now. You've done something else. You've walked into something else. Preach it. It's a time of new beginnings. It's a time that has now come that we are witnessing, I believe, signs and demonstrations of wonders. And I believe there are going to be transitions of transformations. Transition of transformation. In other words, we're going to go from one place to another, and it's going to transform everything it touches. Good times are coming, I'm telling you. Good times are coming. Amen. How many know you have a destiny? Amen. You have a destiny. Is your destiny... I'm going to shock you. Is your destiny revival waves of glory? And you know what God just dropped in my spirit? You're all wrong. Because your destiny is heavenly. Revival ways of glory is just part. Come on, that's a natural destiny. Our heavenly destiny is what we want. And if it just involves this as a natural destiny right now, then that's the natural destiny we have right now. Come on. Hallelujah. If somebody would have told me five years ago that the ministry that I was, a, I mean, back in 2004, when I was establishing that last ministry, praise God, and they would have told me, you're only going to do that for a while, and then it's going to just go a whole different direction, you're going to start a whole new beginning, I'd have told them, you're crazy. I'm, I'm starting this thing, and I, I have a vision for it, and there's going to be supernatural things take place in my life. I'm fulfilling the word of the Lord. An act of obedience is a dedication of an individual to the Lord and his sovereign purpose. Many families, including our own, I know have lost loved ones. Whether they have died and gone to be with the Lord, we hope, or They have gotten off the path that God has for them. You know, one thing my wife and I have said over and over and over again, because we've had so many friends, people that we call friends, that were so close to our lives, that we had fun with, that we sat with, that we laughed with, that we ate with, that we just goofed off with, that we sat around the fire with. And they're going so far the wrong direction right now. I mean, they're just destroying their own life, their children's life, everything, by going a wrong direction right now. It's affecting all of them. It's gotten them all against all kinds of things that God's done in their life that they know to be true. But the enemy's robbing them. And it's gotten us to a place that's like, I don't want no more friends. I mean, why? why I don't want to. I mean, it's, let me just preach, hit it, and run. Let me just release all that God's saying and then get out, not get so close to people. Why? Because I'm tired of being there right next to them day after day, week after week, encouraging them, being right there, experiencing the joys of all the glory that God's doing in their life, and then they just turn their back completely on it all because of a spirit. It's awful. We run into them every once in a while, different ones, and... They look hard. 
They look dead. The same people that used to shake and fall and, 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 and go through the glory so many nights after night after night. And now they're going nowhere. Or they're traveling hours and hours every week just to be in some kind of service and they're still not getting enough because they're just not the same. You know, our loved ones who won't listen, what do you do with it? You got to move on. But it makes you to a place to where you don't want to pick up another one. You know, if you pick up a hitchhiker and they pull a gun on you, you're not going to want to pick up another one. Come on, or they stab you in the back, you're not going to want to pick up another one. And it's not even, I mean, even if you receive the healing, that I know we have gone through much healing. But it still causes you not to want to let that wall down again. A hundred percent. Hallelujah. But understand. Sometimes a difficult truth is to embrace when we have lost those close. Because it is a great source of comfort to know that we're with the Lord. That we're going the right direction. But sometimes the place that we're about to go as a group it's going to look like 99 are going one rec way and the one is going another direction because of where we're about to go. It will appear as though you're wrong. Come on. It's kind of like trying to discover that the world's round. Remember back in the day, they would freak out. You don't want to go all the way over there. You're just going to go off the end, man. The world's flat. You keep going that direction, you're just going to drive off the end. You don't want to go that direction. There was a lot of fear back in the day before they realized the world was round. But understand, all that we have gone through and all that we go through, we need to cherish the fact that we are actually in the arms of the Lord. And one thing we need to understand is we need to shake off. Sometimes we can't carry everybody. You're not going to be able to carry every person on your back. Yeah. If they don't want to go where, where we're going, then they're just not going to be able to go. But I would rather be that one out of 99 going where God wants me to go, being effective with healing, power, miracles, signs, wonders, glory, presence of God, than to be the 99 doing nothing, going nowhere. Because if you're a friend with God, it's better than having friends. It really is. Something's happening in here today. Amen. We love you, Lord. Yeah. Since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every burden and sin which easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author, the finisher, I like to say also the perfecter of our faith. 
and who is for joy set before him to endure the cross, despising the shame, and has set on the right hand of the throne. We have an eternal purpose in Christ. And over and over and over again, there will be days where the enemy will try to cause us to want to quit and give up. That's why I'm telling you it is important, it is vital that we realize that we have a big purpose. We are going somewhere big. The one person that may walk in who has been through brutality in their life, gets healed and set free, it's going to be awesome. Another person comes in who's been bound to a wheelchair and gets out. It's going to be miracles that's going to take place. But understand, it will be worth it if the 99 are going nowhere and we're the ones going somewhere. It's going to be worth it because I would rather have a tangible anointing in my life going somewhere doing something for God than to be hypocritical going to church every week. Because that's what a lot of people are doing. They're reading the Bible as a hypocrite. Because you can't read about miracles happening then and say they don't happen today. We are living in a day that we will experience demonstrations of grace and power and resources of heaven. Beneficiaries. That's what you are. You're a beneficiary. Amen. Come on. Of the sacrifices that people have done for years and years. You are actually benefiting because of people who pressed in the day of Azusa Street. You are benefiting because of those that pressed in in the days of Pensacola, the days of Ontario, the days of all the different regions where God has moved upon people's lives. Come on. You are beneficiaries, beneficiaries. And th those who live, lives have poured out and had drank the offering before the Lord. Come on. The supernatural things God has poured out throughout the centuries, we are benefiting from. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am right now if I hadn't begun to read and study and listen to the videos and watch the videos of, of, of all the great men and women of God of, the, of, of yesterday. The Jack Coes and the, the Smith Wigglesworths and the Catherine Coolmans and the A.A. A. Allens and, and all the ones, of the, even the generals of God that you guys have talked about. And I'm telling you, sometimes I think we just need to kind of put them in again and watch them again. Why? Because it stirs that fire in your belly. Man, they had people coming in on deathbeds, on stretchers, and they got up and walked out, praise God. Sometimes they would bring 30 stretchers in, 18 would be up and walk out, and the others would go back and be uh, 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 took out of the hospital within hours. you got to understand those type of miracles are going to happen in our day again to where people are going to come in that are desperate, that are on the last leg, and even doctors are going to bring in people into the church in the days ahead. People are going to be brought in by doctors saying, I can't do nothing else with them. They're going to die. They are on their last leg. They've only got a couple months to live. And we heard that you were going to be in town. So we're going to bring them up on their beds, their deathbeds. They're going to reel them in on their deathbeds. And they're going to walk out healed by the power of God. That's what's going to happen. But understand, it's going to come with a big price. And it's only going to come to those who are dedicated. Yeah. Those that are fully saying, yes, I will. Yeah. It's much like Jesus. It's much like Jesus when he said, if this cup may not pass from me, I'll drink. If this cup may not pass from me, I'll drink. We shall live a crucified life to walk in a glorified life. Our tears are going to be worth the price. The pain is going to be worth the price. The sacrifices financially are going to be worth the price.
Even people like Nathan Morris, who's preaching and traveling in revival with nice clothes on and probably drives a nice car and, you know, and his wife has a giant ring on her finger. So you know that, you know, he's probably blessed, has an international ministry, has traveled all over the world, things available everywhere in the world. But you got to understand something. He also was the same man who sweat in the fields of Africa, who ministered in places he probably never got an offering. He would go through the crowds and sweat among the African uh, people and, and minister in all the places of the fields out in the dirt lands. Those are the kind of sacrifices I believe have made him into the man that he is today. Yeah. Come on. God is not going to promote somebody who's not willing to lay their lives down. Amen. We got to lay our lives all the way down. Come on. Every decision you make is vital. Yeah. Man, I'm having a good time in this. Amen. You know, you can see the promise prophetically. <clears throat> you can see the promise prophetically over and over and over again and not fully realize the promise that God has for our day. Even so, scriptures point out God saw grander pictures that had come to pass in most men's life in the Word of God. Come on, you read in Hebrews how many of the great men of God fell short of the purpose God put within them. I don't know about you, but I believe a lot of the body of Christ is going to go to heaven and God's going to say, you know, when we made decisions that day, when we made decisions this day, when we made decisions that day, when you made a decision to walk from that and change your life for that, you made decisions to walk away from a lot of purpose. You ended up touching a few people's lives, doing a little thing, when I had a big picture I wanted to do in your life, and you never touched it. Amen. Who's going to pay the responsibility to have the blood on their hands of the people's lives we don't touch that because of our decisions? Come on. We can't take it for granted somebody else is going to touch them. That somebody else is going to impact their life. There's people Paula and Sam are going to touch that I can never touch. I could minister to them till I'm blue in the face, and they'll never want what I have. But they will take it because of what they have. There's people Joseph's going to be able to touch that I won't be able to touch. They will never receive from me, but they're going to receive from him. But what if we don't step up? Who's going to touch them? We can't guarantee somebody else is going to come across their path. The Bible talks about that everyone will be able to know that Jesus is Lord, shall hear the word of God preached. Everybody will. The Bible talks about that. But understand, that doesn't mean that everyone's going to make the decision. Amen. All the innocent blood and the reservoirs of prayer are being harnessed in heaven. They will be merged in with the intercession of sacrifice of the Lord himself. I don't know about you, but the Lord himself is praying, and he is in intercession. You know what happens to the people that we don't touch that we're supposed to? Jesus is interceding for them. You know, when we fall away and try to do something and live our life the way we want, and how many have ever felt that nagging, that pulling? trying to pull you away from doing something that you're not supposed to. You know, that's not just conviction to where he's like, I don't want you to do that, Bill. It's also, what about, what about Jim? What about Bob? What about Crystal? What about Nathan's and the, and the, and the Joes and, you know, and, 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 and all the, the people that you're going to minister to, Bill? I'm trying to pull you back because of all the people you're going to touch for God. That's why you get that nagging, pulling. It's not just to barely get you saved. Yeah. Only he loves us enough to die for one of us. But at the same time, he wants us to be able to fulfill what he has for us.
Praise God. Man, who prepares all this stuff? There's so much in here. Our loved ones, Samuel, they take prematurely. They get taken prematurely. The height of anointings. And I'm telling you, there's so many. Why do they die at an early age? You know, there's even people on the Internet, I've said it probably before, they talk about people like, they talk about people like, Ruth Ward Heflin, who passed away at an early age, and they're like, well, she passed away because she floated in signs and wonders, and it got her sick. You know, it's like, and it's on the Internet right now. It's like, give me a break. Gold dust doesn't give you cancer. Hallelujah. I mean, really. I mean, that's what they're saying. And, you know, a lot of the men and women of God Eat, live, and breathe the ministry so much that whenever they do die, their bodies are, are like elderly people because they are through their body, through the ringer. And let me tell you something. You say, why is their body so deteriorated then? I believe the anointing a lot of times keeps our body going. As soon as the anointing lifts and we, and we pass away, when it lifts, guess what? Our deteriorated bodies are going to be there. Come on. I got x-ray proof right now. If I wanted to, I could quit the ministry, go to SSI, Social Security, whatever that is, and I got enough x-ray proof, MRI proof, I could get it done right now, and it would be enough to get me disability. I wouldn't have to have, I mean, I'd probably make more money from disability sometimes, and I'm telling you, and I could have it, and it would be guaranteed income every month coming in, and I could get it just because of this that is diagnosed by many doctors. Even Social Security, they have sent me multiple letters saying, hey, if you want to sign back up, go ahead. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because it's not supposed to be able to do this. Hallelujah. It's not supposed to be able to do what it does. Yeah. I even had their doctor. Social Security doctors never, never look at you and say, well, you're, you're a perfect case. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. After I told them I didn't want it, and I didn't want it anymore, they said, well, you need to come in and have an appointment just so that we can close the case. I said, okay. I came in, and the doctor looked at me, and he did, did all his records. He goes, I'm going to put you in for your disability. You should be getting your check in three weeks. I go, I don't want it. I said, he goes, what? He goes, you have fractures. You have torn ligaments. You have holes in your bones from the infection that ate the holes out. Like Swiss cheese is what it looks like in the x-ray. And, and, and he goes, you have all rights to this. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I don't want it. I said, I don't have a cane. I don't have crutches. He says, oh, that won't last. Oh, I will last because it's not you that have put me together. It's him that's put me together. I have to keep going. Hallelujah. And he's going to make me go as long as I need to go. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and sometimes people they will even try to, even church people will say, you know, oh, arthritis could come into that because of all those surgeries. Yeah. 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 Not if God heals it. Come on, you get immunity. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't you think that messed up that, you know, doctor from India? Amen. Hallelujah. He goes, you don't want? No, I don't want. But you got a good case. No, I don't want it. Hallelujah. You can get $1,000 a month. I don't want it. We're doing nothing. Yeah. 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 You know, if you want to just give me the money, praise God, give it to me, but understand. Come on. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Praise God. And even whenever I started actually working for the ministry after that injury, and I started going, and they put me on a nine-month probation period. 
And what it was is you get to come back any time in nine months, no problems, no questions. You can work eight months and 29 days and then say, I just want my disability. And they, they said there'd be no questions asked. And they just give it right back to you. And after that time, I told them I don't need it. And they're like, are you sure? I know a minister. He went through a car accident. His back was fractured on every vertebrae on his back. Put in a body cast. In other words, you can't do that when that happens. He's got he had pins, needles, and all this stuff put in. Took him six months to get a handicap plate. You know, even with all that, it took six months for him finally to get the handicap plate. So he gets it, comes to a meeting, praise God. And he sat on the front row, and I didn't know he had a problem because I, I always came in late. And, and, and all of a sudden, I looked at him, and I said, God's healing you supernaturally from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, and all the foreign objects are going to leave your body today. And I laid hands on him, and he flew out of the chair, and it was pretty dramatic. And he went to the doctor. They checked him. They did all the tests, and... They couldn't find the metal in his back. They couldn't find all the pins in his back. They couldn't find all the connections. They couldn't even find bone spurs where anything was ever broken. A lot of times you have a look, you, if you break a bone and you get an x-ray years later, it will show some kind of bulge in the bone in the place where it was broke. That's just the way bones heal. And understand, they couldn't find nothing wrong with him. So he goes to the state and tells them, I don't need the plate anymore. Six years later, he was still driving with the handicap plate, trying to get them to release it. They won't take it off now. He even told them he wanted to start a whole other plate, and somehow they ended up just putting it on that one. So he's driving around with this little wheelchair picture on his plate, hallelujah, and, and, and gets to park. He says, I get to park in good spots, hallelujah, and I'm healed. I bet people think, my goodness, you know, he pulls up in the car, gets out, and runs into the store. And they're like, he's in the handicap spot. Come on. I think there ought to be a limit. You only can tell the government so many times, hey, I don't want it or I don't want this. And if they say no, you just say, okay, I'll take it. Come on. Hallelujah. Sooner or later, just give up and receive it. Praise God. If I didn't make... Uh, some money now, praise God, I probably, you know, disability income probably be pretty nice, but I'm making enough income, we don't need it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We could use an extra thousand, but not that way. Hallelujah. Okay. I got to at least talk about one more point. There's going to be an increase. I talked about it a little bit in the beginning of terrorism and plagues. We've already encountered significant terrorism. I believe we don't even know a lot of the terrorism that's been planned for our nation. I don't believe the news finds out no, is, is really, they don't know. Most of the time, things happen. But it's only the beginning. In this area, we will only see escalation. Because just as much as the glory of God rises, demonic hatred rises. Amen. Come on. Amen. Over the next season of time, I really believe there's going to be a, a real escalation. Naturally, we are to continually call in the church to a place of prayer and intercession. To curtail. I like that word. The possibilities. The Lord has revealed that there is a certain line of separation that, that has been crossed in our nation. And that's what's causing this. And you say, what? It has to do with Israel. Our nation has crossed the line. It has become more against Israel than an ally. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they talk. 
if Israel was under a big bombing, would we probably go in and try to rescue them? Yes, we would. But at the same time, we've allowed more to be done to Israel than we should have ever allowed. Israel should have all the property that they have and, and, and even have the property they've lost. It's destruction taking place to Israel, God's nation, and I don't care what happens. If we're not going to support Israel, it's going to affect us. Come on. And everything, even our decision-making, hallelujah. Certain government decisions have been made contrary to God's purpose and plan. There are remains, right now, there is remains of leadership con that is a contract of positions related to Israel and the sacred land. Even, even, I mean, even in our defense, there's things, praise God. you got to understand, I really believe that even removal of our armies and, and military has been wrong in some of those places, praise God, because you got to understand something, that there is something going on there, and we need to be very protective of that country. Now, at the same time, at the same time, I don't care if America went after Israel, we would lose. If we tried to bomb and annihilate Israel in the natural, it would look like we could have get rid of them within a couple days. But you know what? We would never be able to win. You know why? Because sooner or later, God's supernatural power would come in and annihilate us. They'll think, man, that was an atomic bomb. No, that was atomic glory. And I'm telling you, that's what's the plan of the enemy right now, to destroy Israel. Do you not think that the, the enemy knows what the Bible says? Come on. We need to chastise the leadership about Israel. The battle of terrorism. We need to open ourselves to similar form of uh, torment. I'm talking about as a witness the sniper terrorism that's taking place at the nation's capital. You know, terrorism is a use of violence and torture. Physical intimidation. And we need to understand that's what the enemy is wanting to do, intimidate us. The news media is not fully reporting all the positions. Come on. And our nation and leadership is determined to make certain decisions so also are we determined from heaven, and God's from heaven, I'm telling you, making a decision, certain things that are going to transpire in our nation because of the decisions we're making. And every decision we make right now is critical. And the decisions we make even in conducting services are critical. Because we are going somewhere. We have a purpose, praise God. And sometimes, you know what happens in our church, especially whenever you are this size, we consider, well, there's nobody here. We don't have that many here. So let's just be free and do whatever we want. But guess what? You know what happens a lot of times? Is when we do have people come in, we can't adjust. And guess what? It ends up, we just get overthrown. Come on. The Lord despises our nation's decisions. The Lord despises our nation's decisions. The God who made this world has determined that there are boundaries and there are supernatural things He's wanting to do in our nation. The way we react the way we do things is critical. Everything that we do right now is critical. Remember what I said. If any other time that you need to listen, it's going to be right now because of where we're about to go. Where we're about to go. This is not just a little vision. 
This is a big vision. Tonight we're going to talk about some things. I'm, I know we got four people supposed to preach, but I got to talk about some things tonight. Amen. And it's because of where we're about to go. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to come up short. Hallelujah. And it'd be a lot easier to give up and things, but instead I'm just going to, I'm just going to get offensive sometimes of what God's wanting to do this next season. Amen. Because it's about where we're going. It's about the big purpose. Yeah. And if we're going to move into a larger place and put a lot more income out and all this stuff, we got to understand, we, if it's going to cost us more, guess what? It's going to cost us everything. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I love the move of God, and I love all, but you got to understand, most people don't understand the move of God because they just walk in to sit in a pew. They sit in a seat. They don't understand what it takes to get to that place. And that's what we're learning as a group, and you're going to learn as a group with me, is there is a lot of things on the underground floors that you learn to, 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 to fight and, 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 and to, to go after and to sweat and to bleed for the things of God. And I'm telling you, that's what we've got to do. We've got to go after this with everything we have. And let me tell you something. If we, there's, a, there's, a, there's a moment of time that is open in the realm of the Spirit. And if we don't go through the door of opportunity during that moment of time, we will not make it. The move of God only will make it if we make it to the level that it's supposed to be at that moment, that it's supposed to be made. And if we don't make it, it won't be made. And I'm telling you, that's why we're going to begin to deal with the things that we've been talking about. We talked about the spirit of religion. We're, now we're talking about dedication. I'm going to pray for dedication today. I'm going to release that dedication, both hands on the sides of the heads of the, uh, any who want it. But understand, you got to understand, it's not just going to be a quick fix just because I lay hands on it that it's going to change your life. you got to understand, if you don't go with it, it's not going to work. And every decision we make is critical right now. Right now is the most critical time in your life, and whether you think it or not, it is. It could be the difference of knowing exactly when the enemy is going to strike. If you're in the perfect will of God, those are going to be the first ones that hear. There's something coming that's going to hit at this area. And if we're not in the perfect will of God, we're not going to hear it. Because let me tell you something. God's going to tell his friends first. And his friends are the ones that are going to know, his, know the voice. And a whole lot of other people are not going to hear because they're going to be caught up in their own agendas. I believe 9-11 is a small measure compared to what's going to happen in our nation over the next few years. You know why? Because our guard's getting let down again. America is starting to let their guard down. Oh, we're safe. We're okay. We're always okay. Let me tell you something. There's a military plane. <clears throat> I had one time went to a, a place in St. Louis where they were having displays of the military. And I had a military plane land on right on top of me and a group of people. You say, how did it do that? It was invisible. Amen. And they said, they told us to take so many steps, and then they said, stop, turn around, and, it, and then they had it appear. A military plane, one of ours. It, 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 they said somehow it appeared. They wouldn't give the secrets, of course, but they said it would appear and disappear, and it had no sound. You say, oh, that's just crazy. That's just one thing that we know about. How many more 
do we not know about? They can look at a photo from a satellite and be able to see in your backyard. Come on. They can do. They can flash something at your house and see how much money you have because of the the slip the the, the barcode thing in your in your money. That little strip. Come on. We have an awesome nation. Has a lot of power. But we have a bigger nation who has a lot more power. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to put my trust in it. 100%. I love America, but I have seen America come up short in our defense. So I'm going to be more of a going after God. I'm not going to be anti-America. I don't believe in picketing and all that stuff. And I love, I love USA. I'm not going to ever do that. But at the same time, we got to understand our trust needs to be in the Lord 100%. God is so good. God is so good. Praise God. All right, we'll do it. Can you play a soft song? Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm not going to be ministering during this time. I'm just releasing a prayer of dedication. So, hallelujah. And there's a reason why, because we need to receive this. This is a, p- a powerful importance. Powerful importance. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, we thank you. <laughs> We thank you, Lord, so much for what you're doing. Lord, today, you know what I'm about to do is I lay hands on these people. There's going to be a a prayer of blessing and protection from accidents and plagues and anything the enemy will try to do in their life. So, Lord, we ask God for that anointing, glory, power to come upon each person today in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, I'm not just preaching this to sow some kind of fear, but it's to get us ready because there is a bigger picture that is of vital importance we need to be ready for. And, Lord, if we're not ready, most of us are going to miss it. So, Lord, we say yes and amen. We want to be ready. If you want that prayer of dedication upon you this morning, you need to come. Just make a line across the front. Hallelujah. There's not going to be ushers. Everybody needs to receive. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay hands. All I'm going to do is lay hands on both sides of your head. I'm going to release the blessing and protection. Come on. Hallelujah. Remember what I said in the beginning. Do you believe I'm here for God? I'm telling you, you need to hear. You need to hear this. Come on. I'm not just saying this today just to have a little blast. Praise God. I believe in preaching all the good, glorious things about the fire of God and the glory of God and the anointing of God. But whenever God puts something on your heart, you need to share. Hallelujah. You got to put. You got to release it. You got to say it. Hallelujah. Just as the fire of God that Sam has seen is going to come and fireballs and hit the earth, I'm telling you, there's also going to be things coming to hit the earth that's going to be the opposite coming from the demonic realm to try to cause fear to come upon our country. And we need to be in a place of protection. So many people are just going to church, spinning around, going nowhere. And I don't want to be part of that. So I'm going to pray this this morning, praise God. Tonight we're gonna start we're gonna deal with some things, get our house in order, even some more, praise God, and just let God have his way tonight. Praise God, hallelujah. But I'm just gonna go down the line. I'm just gonna lay hands on you, pray. I'm gonna pray blessings and protection. God's the one doing the work. It has nothing to do with me. He's the one doing it. But what I'm doing is gonna be a prayer of blessing protection but the full measure is dedication 
dedication this morning. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Hey. Lord, we seal it done right now in the name of Jesus. We seal it done right now in the name of Jesus. We seal it done right now in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Some of the emotions and things that you feel sometimes of frustrations, do you feel it because it's being put within you by the Holy Spirit? Lord, we receive today what you have. We receive it in Jesus' name. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. We say yes, and we say amen. Which I like what some people once told me in Africa. They said, every time you say amen, we receive it as finished. We receive it as complete. We receive it's done. I had a friend, he went to Africa, and he, he would preach, but he was a hey man preacher. He hey man himself all the time, and every time he'd say hey man, they'd get up and shout for 15 minutes. And be like, my goodness, it's like, okay. And then he'd go, oh, praise God, amen? And then they'd do it another 15 minutes. They'd be like, so he, he realized that he can't preach like he does here, there. <laughs> Otherwise, he's not going to get nothing out. Because he's the type of preacher, he'd be like, I'm going to preach about God's love this morning. Amen? And they'd, you know, and they'd preach about something else, you know. God's doing a great thing here. Do you believe that? Say amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is good. He is good. Whew. Praise God. You know what? Sometimes I just don't want to go on top of something that's good. It's, it's exactly what God wants, and I don't want to go on top of it and put something over it. This is exactly what God wanted right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll come back tonight and tear it up. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we cleanse the room of anything that is not of you. And every distraction and everything, we cleanse the room right now.